Hmm, is this thing on? Is this on? Oh, I forgot this part. Ever forgotten an important step? Does your team forget to ask patients for a good review? Do your dental assistants forget to prepare an important instrument? Does your team forget to verify patients' insurance eligibility prior to their visit? Have you forgotten to make a payment to a vendor? If you've answered yes to any of those questions, continue this video. Otherwise, see you in the next one. You are not alone. It's very common for us to forget. It's not because we lack the knowledge or experience. The high levels of stress and fatigue we experience every day can compromise our cognitive function. As a result, we forget important steps. According to Dr. Atul Gawande, despite the advancement of surgery and the number of surgeries performed every year, more than 150,000 Americans die each year during surgery. Research consistently shows that half of all deaths are due to avoidable human error. Human errors such as forgetting to confirm the availability of reserved blood before surgery or simply washing your hands properly prior to surgery, such errors are completely unacceptable. Yet, they're very common and cause serious complications, including death. We're all gonna die! Ah! And I cite the most important medical resource of all time, Grey's Anatomy. No, not the book, the TV show. Well, did anyone order contrast, but she tested for allergies? Mm -hmm. I got Paige, what's going on? We need to get her to the OR immediately. Let's start her on Benadryl and steroids stack. Is this your patient? Yes. Why didn't you screen her for any contrast allergies? I did. Not here. I mean, yes. there's no record of any test. I ordered. You did? Yes. You sure? Yes. You did. Hey, I ordered the damn test. Dr. Gawande went out to find a solution and search in other industries that have high stakes and severely reduced human errors. He interviewed leaders in the construction and the aviation industries, two industries that have maintained a great reputation of excellence despite operating in a risky and complex environment. Catastrophic events rarely occur in both industries. The construction industry has a building failure rate of 0.00002%. That means only one in every 50,000 structures only partially or entirely collapses due to human error. Likewise, in the aviation world, the odds of being killed in an airline flight are one in 29.4 million. Both industries have an excellent track record because they've developed a habit of consulting checklists in their day-to-day -day processes. It's hard to imagine something as simple as a checklist would significantly improve a process to the extent of eliminating more than 80% of the chances of avoidable human errors. The fact is, it actually works. In order to ensure the patient care consistency, minimize errors, improve quality, and help train your team members, you have to have checklists in your practices. Let's go over some of the checklists that you can use at your practice. The first one is what we call the patient experience checklist. Basically, a list of the tasks that have to be done in order to standardize the quality of a patient experience. In this case, you can see a snippet of it uh, the patient's name, the date, and whoever is the person who did it, in this case, the check-in person or whatever the name would be, front office supervisor, smile and greet, scan entrance ID, mark patient status to arrive, take picture, change provider, all these lists of things that we have to remember to do for every patient. And now it moves on to the next team member, which is the assistant or the hygienist. And then it moves on to the following team member and so forth. Let's take a look at what we call a task checklist. This is basically a list of tasks of things that you have to do on a regular basis. In this specific one, there's the dental assistant end of day checklist. Every dental assistant is supposed to do these list of tasks every day at the end of the day. For example, clean and pouch all instruments and turn on the, the sterilizer, 
clean and prep all operatories, flush the suction, clean the suction traps, clean sinks, and so forth. Every position has a task checklist like this. Here's a practice orientation checklist for new team members. Stage 1, first day, stage 2, first week, stage 3, first month, and it tells them exactly what's supposed to happen for their orientation. Leave me a comment below or send me an email if you'd like to learn more about checklists in the dental practice. No dental practice should ever function without checklists. You should incorporate processes and checklists that enable your team members to perform the important, monotonous, and recurring tasks. This allows their full attention to be given to patient care and maintaining high levels of accuracy and productivity. Remember that a dental practice is like any other medical entity and business. All departments need to work together to coherently produce the ultimate outcomes, which are exceeding patients' expectations, being an integral part of the community, and creating growth and expansion to create jobs for the community and profits for the shareholders. If you enjoyed this video, like most boring people say, like and subscribe. Feel free to contact me directly, my information is below. Please check out our previous KPI video, I'm sure you'll love it. Thank you for watching. Ready, Dr. Lee, I just have to have the nurse show me the consent form as part of the checklist. Uh. Scalpel. Wait a second. Dr. Gray, you're okay, sterile. Hold, hold, what hold are on, you... wait a minute. I'm, I think that there something might be off. I'm thinking that maybe this is not our patient. Then whose patient is it? I don't, I don't, I don't, I don't know. I just, I... You don't know. I'm holding a scalpel in my hand. I think you had better find out. Stop! Don't cut! Uh, it's the wrong patient.